Fifth grade lesson 8.1 is divide fractions and whole numbers. This will model out the division with the fractions and the whole numbers. And this one's a good one to have modeled out for us because the concept of division with fractions, because fraction, a fraction is already kind of a division problem in itself, is a little confusing at first. But once you see it modeled and you know what's happening, it helps you uh, know why things, why numbers are coming out the way they're coming out. Our essential question is how do you divide a whole number by a fraction and divide a fraction by a whole number? Let's investigate. Um, they say the materials we could use are these fraction strips. I do have some in my classroom if you need them in front of you, but it'll be shown on the video as well. Mia walks a two mile fitness trail, two miles, I'm gonna highlight that. And she stops to exercise every one fifth of a mile. How many times does Mia stop to exercise? So we know that we're splitting up equally this two miles into one-fifth pieces. So technically what we're doing is two divided into one-fifth pieces. But how do we calculate that is the question. And I know with multiplication we said, oh, okay, let's just turn this to a fraction and then multiply straight across. Well, dividing straight across on this is going to be a nightmare, so that's not how we do that. There is a set of steps that we'll use, but first let's see why it works out that way, why we can do the steps that we will learn to do. So we'll draw a number line from 0 to 2, 0 to 2, 0, 1, 2, and then they're all split up. Divide the number line into fifths, so between 0 and 1, we need it split into five equal pieces one two three four five and then again one two three four five all right then we skip count by fifths from zero to two to find two divided by one fifth that is one two three four five six seven eight nine ten or five ten there are ten one fifths in two whole you can use the relationship between multiplication and division. Remember, they're the inverse of each other to explain and check your solution. So we record and check the quotient. 2 divided by 1 fifth, 2 divided by 1 fifth, we figured out was 10. There were 10 little 1 fifth pieces between 0 and 2 because 10 times 1 fifth or 10, or I should say 1 fifth, 10 times will get us to the 2. So what happens here is that our brains at first want to resist this and say, no, wait, I'm doing two, I'm dividing it by one-fifth. When I divide, numbers get smaller in my previous um, calculations, but now you're telling me I have a small number, a small number, and I divide them and I end up with a bigger number? Yes, because um, I'm dividing this two whole into smaller pieces, and I want to know how many of those pieces, there, of those small pieces there are. So this modeling of this uh, understanding for division with fractions helps our brains get over that. So Mia stops to exercise 10 times. We're going to need to see that a few times. Let's look at another one. Roger has two yards of string. He cuts the string into pieces that are one third of a yard long. How many pieces of string does Roger have? So he started with two. And he split those equally, splitting equally is divide, into one-thirds pieces. Okay, again, what they mean by that is if I have two yards, I'm going to use black for my two yards. There's one yard, and there's two yards. Whoopsie, I went off the page. You might want to fit that on your page better. And they're telling me I want that split into one-thirds pieces. Each of those yards gets split into one-third, so there's three equal pieces for the first yard and three equal pieces for the second yard. And our answer is, how many one-thirds pieces are there to make the two? There's one, two, three, four, five, six. So two divided by one-third is six. So then they say you can record and check. This is, again, so our brains can digest this. Two divided by one-third is six, and remember, uh, multiplication is the inverse of division, so we could say 6 times 1 thirds, 6 1 thirds, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, gives us 2 whole. So 6 times 1 third is going to give us 2 whole. So Roger will have 6 pieces of string. 
When you divide a whole number by a fraction, how does the quotient, the answer to that division problem, compare to the dividend? Let's look at the one we just did. We had 2 divided by 1 third, and we ended up with 6. And I had a number that's less than 6, and a number that's much less than 6, it's even less than 1, and I divided them. Again, usually when we divide, we end up with the quotient being smaller than the uh, original number that we were dividing up. And so for us to get a number that is larger than our dividend, um, then it's, it looks weird, weird to us. But that is what happens. So how, how does the quotient compare to the dividend? The dividend is 2. The quotient is 6. It ends up being bigger. So that's something, and in some cases, for those of you who really understood the division concept that your brain is, is battling against, but that does happen. So it is larger than the dividend. When we're used to seeing the division quotient smaller than the dividend if it were divided by a whole number. So if it's divided by a fraction, Remember, what we're doing is we're asking ourselves how many of these cut up little pieces would you need to put together to build this whole amount. Now they're asking us, explain how knowing the number of fifths in one could help you find the number of fifths in two. Okay, well, how many fifths are in one whole? Remember, fifths is our de de um, denominator of five. So we're split into five pieces. How many? Fifths would give me one whole, right? It's just the same. Five fifths is one whole. Five divided by five is one. So if five fifths is one whole, then how many fifths is two whole? I would just add another one to make two whole together, and I'd end up with ten fifths. So it would be ten times one fifth equals two, two whole. So let's apply that here. Describe how you would find four divided by one fifth. And so if I know from above, 5 fifths is 1, it takes 5 of those 1 fifths to make 1, then how many would it take to make 4? It would be 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5, right? So 20. And I'll draw this out too. So let's go ahead and say I have 4 whole. I'm going to make that in red. And then in blue, I'm going to split each of those four into five equal pieces. Pretend those are five equal pieces on each one. And then it's asking us, when it's asking us to do this division, how many of those tiny little pieces are there in total? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. We can use fraction strips to divide a fraction by a whole number. Kalia shares half a package of clay equally among herself and each of two friends. What fraction of a whole package of clay will each friend get? So step one, we can place one half a strip under a one whole strip. We start with the one whole. And she had half a package. That's why they're doing a half here. And then she's splitting them equally among herself and two friends, watch out for that, sometimes we miss that detail, herself is one person and two friends for a total of, psst, that's three, right? Sometimes we miss that, we see the two and read half of it and go, oh, we're dividing by two. Um, she's splitting it equally amongst three people, herself included. So we're taking that half amount and we're splitting it into three equal pieces. So for step one, they put the half strip under the one whole strip. Then for the divide by one, basically we're saying we're half package. Let me just do this, oopsie, one half. And divided by three people. Find three fraction strips, all with the same denominator that fit exactly under here. It's going to be the one sixth, one six, one six, because remember our goal is to how much of the whole does it take to build it? So I would need the one six there, and then I would need those again. One six, one six, one six. So each piece is one six of the whole. That's the tricky part. Record and check the quotient. One half divided by three equals one six, because one six 
times three equals one half. So each friend will get one sixth of the whole package of clay. And so you probably are saying this is kind of a confusing concept division with a fraction, which is already a division problem. So model, the modeling piece is really helpful for our brains, in my opinion. So let's do three divided by one third. We have three whole. We're dividing each of those ones of the three whole into three equal pieces. There's three equal pieces for that, three equal pieces for that, three equal pieces for that. How many of those one-thirds are there to build all three is what this division problem is asking us. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine of them. Because nine times one-third, or uh, one-third nine times, will give me the three whole. We can use a number line, too. Um, what label should I write for each of the smaller marks? Well, each of the smaller marks between zero and one is one, two, three, four, five, six. So they are broken into sixths. And if I have three whole, one, two, three whole, divided into one six pieces, how many of those one six pieces will there be laying there all together? Well, we know there's six here, and another six, that's 12, and another six, that's 18. There will be 18 sixths there because 18 times 1 6 or 1 6 18 times is going to take us all the way to 3. And so you're probably starting to make this relationship that, hmm, I just multiplied that. Yep, yeah, you did to get that. Okay, let's keep that in mind for this one. Uh, now I have 1 4th divided by 2. Here's 1 whole. Remember, we're always comparing it to 1 whole. And I'm going to start with the 1 4th of the whole. And I want to divide that into two equal pieces. Well, two equal pieces of one-fourth would be one-eighth. So one-fourth, this amount, split equally into two pieces is going to leave us with just this one-eighth. So it's depending, and because two of those one-eighth one -eighth pieces, two of these one-eighth pieces, two times one-eighth, gives us one-fourth. So... This is just kind of helping our brain make these connections. If I started with a, the larger number and divided by a fraction, I ended up with a quotient that's higher than my dividend. If I started with a fraction and divided into a whole number amount, um, I ended up with a smaller number than my dividend. One fourth is more than one eighth is. So that's something we're trying to make help our brain make connections on. We'll keep that in mind as we do these ones. Um, and hopefully after these three practice ones, you're kind of understanding the concept of how to model that through. I have a dividend of one, and I'm dividing it by one third. My dividend is uh, the whole number here, and it's being divided by the fraction. So my answer is going to be bigger than this dividend. I have one whole. It is divided into three equal pieces. How many? Pieces are there to make one whole. There's one, two, three of them. So one divided by one third equals three. Let's look at this one. Three divided by one fourth equals what? My whole number is my dividend. It's being divided by a fraction. So my answer is gonna be bigger than my dividend. So I have three whole, three whole of something and I'm dividing each of those ones, each of those three, into one fourth. So I'll split them into four equal pieces, each of them. And how many did I end up with? I ended up with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, four times three, 12 is how much I ended up with. My answer, my quotient came out bigger than my dividend. But this time I have, my dividend is the fraction and it's divide, being divided by a whole number. So I'm taking that even smaller. It's gonna end up an answer that's even smaller than that. I have one fifth. I have to start with one whole to compare it to. I'm splitting that into five equal pieces. That is one, two, three, four, five. And I'm gonna draw that right underneath. That is one fifth right there, one fifth of a whole. And I'm splitting that into two equal pieces. I would need a one-tenth and a one-tenth because that's going to give me two-tenths. Reduced down would be one-fifth. So my answer to 
one fifth split up into two equal pieces, one fifth split up into two equal pieces is one tenth. And I had mentioned before over here, I just multiplied, right? Well, here I'm doing the same, but this time it's my denominator multiplying over here. It gave me the tenths and it becomes my denominator. There's gonna be a piece of information that, that comes into place to make the calculation with these easy, but I just wanted you to see why everything works out that way and why that one piece of information that you'll see later, it's called the reciprocal, using the reciprocal to calculate why we do that. This is the lesson that helps your brain understand why we use a reciprocal, which you don't know yet, but you will soon. So that's all this lesson is, is just getting your brain familiar with the division when the fractions are involved. I hope that this was enough to help you understand it and you can go ahead and go on to Think Central and do those, um, those modeling of those calculations so that your brain can continue to understand.